Hi everyone, so this is Barry. So in this video, I'm going to be talking how I went from AI stems to a full production track. Now this track is electronic and I'm going to preview what it sounded like in Suno first of all. So this is it. Okay, so I think I, you get the general gist there. The vocals are very ad lib, which I thought was quite unusual. So um, I start off in Cubasis on my iPad. I've done a previous video if you're interested as well, a bit shorter than this one. This is like a full version of it. So what I'm going to do now is I've extracted the stems out of that one track using FL Studio on my laptop. And then I've called them that ad, Addy Libby. Yeah, I called them. And the first track is just silent, so I'm just getting rid of that. And then I'm just going to start layering down these stems onto my project file, one by one. And then I'm going to go through them exactly what they are. <laughs> I've got the bins to put out. So I'm just getting a general feel for the music at the moment. I'm going to start naming the tracks just so that I know what they are. Just makes things a lot simpler just in case you get confused. Now even though she's not saying proper words, I like the fact that she's just really catchy and that there's lots of hooks in here. So I thought it was quite a usable tune to, to make. So I called this one EDM chords, even though they're kind of arpeggiated. That's the bass, obviously. I find this amazing because it's like, almost like having a template production file that you can then adapt and make it your own. And that's what I really like about AI is the fact you can do this. It saves so much work. I did get them confused, so. so I'm just renaming them now to what they need to be. Now the next, next thing is putting the metronome on and trying to work out the beats per minute for the track. Now when you're doing this, you need to be conscious that it may not start at the beginning of what the song should do. Um, and I got into a little bit of a muddle here. So you can tell that that first section there that I've highlighted is, is kind of a bit like a bridge almost. It's just like a, or an intro to the chorus. So I felt having that first wasn't really the right thing to do because it, it, people will be like, what's this? I won't really understand. But first of all, I'll try and remove some of the very beginning of the track just to see if that kind of matches up with the beat. Now the thing is, if you don't start where it should do, it's going to be out of sync, even if your BPM is correct, your beats per minute. So it's something to bear in mind, and that's kind of what happened here. Unfortunately, it is a bit of trial and error here. I do eventually get it. Those really high-pitched clicks of the metronome, and it's trying to match the song with the metronome. A lot of this is just trial and error, to be honest.
probably didn't do the best job to begin with. So here's my second attempt. So I'm kind of undoing everything right now. That's a good thing, if it doesn't work out, you just undo and try again, that way you're not losing anything. So I realised that it's better to start with that chorus there on bar three, rather than the trying to time the intro. Because if I time the chorus, the rest is going to fall into place. And then it's just making sure, whenever you change a BPM, it's going to change where those stems are. So you need to kind of rearrange them a bit. And you see it's gone a bit to the left. I didn't really want to edit this video because I just wanted to kind of explain what the process is and what the steps is that I go through. It's still a bit too fast, the metronome. So I'm trying 110 now. That sounds better. There you go, so that matches really well now. So I'm really pleased with that. And now that those are done, I can now think about moving that very beginning intro to elsewhere. So I'm gonna move those over to the right just so that I can work with that later. Moving the chorus to the beginning, making sure it's in time. So I'm looking at effects now. At the moment, I'm looking at the bass. Having a look at some factory presets, but I really didn't want them distorted like these. So it's like a Waves plugin that you can buy with Cubasis. Cubasis is just for like the iPad and the iPhone and Chromebooks and other things. But um, Cubase is like the full suite. Steinberg, but to be perfectly honest, I just I love Cubasis. I just think it's its simplicity just suits me down to the ground because it's not too complicated. Again, I'm looking at uh, some effects now for the chords. You can see I've just soloed that out. And I've said this on the last video, it's not about perfection on this song for me, it's more about just getting it into a, a decent song that I'm happy with and sounds good, rather than trying to perfect every single beat, every single note, because that really can't be done well with AI at the moment, even the vocals. You could use Adobe, there's there's a new free um, Adobe thing on the website that that's kind of cleans out vocals. For me, if I'm fairly happy with it, I'm, I'm happy, you know, it's more about not spending too long. Um, as I say, this is about an hour long, this, this video, but typically a song would take about two, three, can be up to about eight hours, if not more. But everybody's got a different technique in how they produce music. Now I'm bringing up the mixer here just to see what kind of levels are. Can you see I'm, I'm decreasing the stereo mix down to 5.97 so I'll try and aim for minus 6 dB and then I'll actually master it after. Again looking at some different presets of effects here to see what works well. So you've got some bass presets that I'm just checking out to see. really just trying to get a feel for the song. Now we're looking at some vocal effects. The 
reverb, I always love to add a bit of reverb on my vocals. I'm just trying different presets of reverb at the moment. I've soloed that out. When you play vocals in isolation, you realise it's obviously AI generated, but when it's all together with the music, you do tend to kind of make it more difficult to detect. So I'm not boring about cleaning up every single word that she speaks, or, or it speaks rather. Well, if you are liking this video, please consider letting me know in the comments section if you like videos like this and you want to see more. This is very different to what I typically do on this channel, so just let me know. Also, a thumbs up would be great, and please consider subscribing. I cover AI, NFTs, and music strategy. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out what to do with that end bit there. really like the chorus on this one. Comes together really well. So I'm just realising where the end of the chorus is really, so that I can split it off. It's obviously there. Making sure that I've, I've got the grid correct and everything. I'm snipping those, or cutting them rather, just so that I can move the beginning out. Obviously, it's uh, the build-up and then the chorus is now on the right. And I'm moving, I'm trying to get the verse one, really. So, you know, I've really got something good going on here with music. AI creation and when you subscribe you, you own the rights to that music which is just amazing so I can release it, this on Spotify if I want to in the future I can earn royalties from it all because I've subscribed to their service now I'm thinking you know it's not good to have everything in one go at the beginning of the song it needs to be a bit more layered so I'm just moving things around to get a feel for what the intro should be obviously a change there and doing the arrangement can can often be quite tricky I personally like it Okay, so I'm highlighting the vocals now, selecting the drums. Okay, yeah, so I'm cutting it out now. Trying to understand the next section. And this section was really interesting because the vocals actually worked. So I think it was a glitch in Sun in Suno before. And now I'm keeping the beat going. I've got the crash problem again. So whenever I clear, this happens repeatedly, which is frustrating at times, but there we are. 
So just having the drums and the bass to begin with sound really good as an intro. Then having the chords coming in. And then the vocals. I'm just checking the second part now. Trying to see what it's like with this new vocal. That's better. Checking the timing again. And how the intro sounds. Very catchy tune. So yeah, I decided to call this track Kings and Queens because of that bit there. Again, now trying that ad lib section. Shortening that chord section there. Now that works quite well. Drums get a bit complicated there. In this process, there's a lot of double checking things, triple checking things, moving things around. I'm trying to understand where the build up can come in for the chorus. See, I'm trying to move it there. Zooming in really helps with this stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, it needs to come in there, so I'm going to chop that last section off and then bring that very quick build up in for the chorus and just see how that sounds when you do select stuff it does seem to remember other stuff as well which you might forget so checking it that works really well That's the chorus now. So happy with that. Okay, so now, again, I'm splitting it into the relevant sections, selecting that, and then simply repeating it. So halfway through, about one minute in. Going back to the verse again. Good. Okay, so now I'm thinking it's a bit too much straight after. So again, going back to the drums and the bass, but obviously making them a bit shorter and bringing in the second verse. Again, I'm not using a mouse, I'm doing this all on the screen. So it's a bit fiddly. Okay, so 
No, ideally we'd have different words for the second verse, but I wanted to try and keep within the hour to actually make this music track. Bridge. So now we're two minutes in. Realising we need to duplicate some stuff. Okay. So again, I'm not editing this video. This is the real one hour. So again, it, it crashes a few times. Straight back into it. That seems to work really well. Now looking at the ending now, the fading out the chords, fading out the bass at a different time, and the drums, shorter fade out there. There we go. We've got that last vocal bit over there, haven't we? So again, just going straight back in again. And I don't normally like to leave it just like that. I like to add some elements in where I can. I just think it adds, adds a lot more to the music by having extra stuff. So I'm looking at my samples now, my audio files, or stems rather than samples, just to kind of see what might be used. Now, if you watched the video before this, which was about half an hour long on that previous track, it was country, so it's very difficult to find samples that were relevant. But I did manage to do it, and I included those. But I'm literally just going through some arpeggiators here just to see if anything fits. I really do like this particular one. But obviously getting timing right and then working out if it's a good match is, is can be quite challenging at times. So I'm just giving it a bit of a time stretch here. Now you can see the ending of that stem. It doesn't cut off properly on the timing, which is why I think this doesn't work. Um, because getting it spot on is quite a challenge. But I use the stretch method. And I'm thinking, is this going to work? And sometimes your first attempt isn't always going to work. But trying it is the most important thing. So I gave up on that one. Now checking out some bass samples that I've got. I'll seem a bit too heavy. Need something a bit lighter. That one sounds good. And I love to add elements to music productions. Sometimes less is more, so you need to be conscious of that. Let's get the time right on this sample. That's good. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it. Because the bass chords need to try and match this new sample. It goes a bit strange at the end as well. So I'm just soloing it so I can hear it. And I'm going to chop it up. into each beat and then I use the transpose function to actually try and increase the semitones right now this one goes 
a little too high. It should actually be three, but I don't realize that straight away. You can probably tell if you can play by ear that that's a little too high, but on three should work. Now I'm going to chop up that into another half. May not need it, but we'll see. But yeah, it's a bit manual this. Ideally, when I used to work on like the Amiga or Tracker software, I could just use the keyboard. But obviously this is the iPad, so, so it's a little bit more laborious. But the effects, you know, the output's the same, so... Again, it's just trying to find out what notes relate to that song so that I can add the right element to it. Yeah, that, see that ending, it does go a bit weird. So I might have to splice that in two again. Yeah, it's just that last bit of that second part, yeah. So let's see. Now it's finding the right semitone to use that it works. But as usual, I try to clear a bit off and it crashes again. Just going straight back in again. So that was the second part. So what I've done is I've decided to get rid of that and just duplicate the last part. Sounds better. Now I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use that second part or whether I'm just going to repeat what I've just chopped up. Yeah, I'm going to chop it up because I, I do like how it gets a lot more severe in its synthesizer edge. So again, it's about repeating the same process. So. Now, for some reason, they've all defaulted to five because I've split them, but it remembers what you transpose them as. So I need to make that go back down to zero again. And then the next one will need to be two instead of five. And the next one, a slight increment of three, not four, because it just went up by one semitone. Now, it hasn't saved it for some reason. Maybe I forgot to click the tick, so again, I'm just going to repeat what I've done, but obviously I can't copy that same sample as before because it's not as intense as, and I like that synthesizer progression, that kind of frequency change. There we go. Again, it's that ending. So... I'm checking the transpose of that one, hearing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Seems to work, but changing it down again. Now that sounds better. The minus two seems to work better, but what about if I increase it now? Then that goes back to what it was before. So I'm checking it with the bass now. Just trying to get everything in the screen that I need to and duplicating it. Here we go. Bringing the mixing level down a bit on that track. Duplicating again. And that bit didn't fit well because that bridge element doesn't fit. It's 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 different chords completely. So it's I need to change those to match the chords of the bridge. So I've wiped out what's there and I'm just going to use the first sliced sample and see if that works. 
think it works, but to double check. Nope. It's a different note. So I'm going really high now just to experiment. Yep. So I'm going to duplicate that. Let's put that in there. That extra element seems to work really well now. Again, I just need to duplicate that for the rest of the track, of the song rather. Again, it's very fiddly when it's on the screen. I'm working in a hotel. Ideally, I would have done this on a screen and a mouse and a keyboard, but it is an iPad, so... Yeah, really happy with that. That works brilliantly. Okay, so now I'm just looking at adding in extra section of the song. Try and end it. I'm duplicating that. I and mean, I could have found better drums to be fair, but I was quite happy with them. So they've gone in the wrong way, so I need to select track 5 and then paste, and then it'll put it in the right place. Adding that in that bass now. Having a fade out of the drums. Looking at fading out the bass. Okay, that seems to work quite well. So, looking at just renaming that track five, just to avoid any confusion down the line. And uh, Cubase saves as you go along, which is really helpful. I always save my project files after and, you know, at the moment I'm just looking for extra samples again, just to see if anything works. Checking some bass lines now again. Mm. That one sounds good. So, created a new track, converting it. Again, the timing's going to be out. As you can see, it's 110 beats per minute and the sample's 128. So I look, need to look at the transpose as well and actually try and get the right note that works. So that was good as the first chord. And this is now as time stretched. So yeah, I'm thinking I could use this. But again, I need to splice this sample and get the same chords in again as what I just did earlier. It just really matches up well by doing this. I, I, I use this an awful lot, this uh, function of uh, transposing, especially when I'm using samples. I don't always use samples. I, I can use MIDI tracks as well. It doesn't sound quite right, I don't think. No, nope, not high enough on the last bit. So number eight. I'm trying to get there with my finger. There's a lot of wobble with that sample. Um, it's just about to crash. <laughs> Again, I quickly closed it down and went back in. And as you can see, it's, it's uh, kept it. So get rid of that last section. Yeah, it's not strictly set by the chords, there's some variation, but 
I think it'll work well, so I'm duplicating that now. But obviously that will need to be removed to the right place of the arrangement. There you go. Oh, there's a bit missing off there, is there? Oh yeah, it's got a bit messy now. Using the undo uh, function, find that again. Something didn't copy properly. That's better. It would have been helpful if I could have glued all of those samples together, but I think it only works for MIDI on a few bases. And this bit, I, I thought because I've used it near the beginning, if I can keep that going at various points of the song, particularly the bridge, that's going to help. But obviously it's got to be the right pitch, so we'll use the transpose again. Yeah, that is right. It's a little off with the pitching on this sample, but that's what happens with synthesizers when they're analog. I think that works well, but it's a bit intense, so I'm fading it. I could have faded out as well, to be honest, but I decided not to. I'm going to copy that, find out where the other bridge was. There you go. So I'm going to paste it in there. No, don't think that's right. Pitching was completely off there, but the the first section that I did should work spot on. And that's the great thing about adding elements is you can put them anywhere you think it will fit in the arrangement. But I do think they're a bit too loud, so I'm going to tone that down. Don't want it to overpower the arrangement completely. The sample in that moon track five. Now I've just created a new track seven. This song's going to be in my head for like ages now. So, just checking some more samples. I do like to have a bit of a build up with EDM music, electronic music, and I do like those claps snares whatever you think they are but maybe not all of it because it goes on for quite some time but again on the bridge it would fit really well to have that so I'm gonna cut out most of it and just keep the beginning but those claps need to be time stretched to match the bars of the beat so you can visualizely hopefully visualize where they need to go that's too much so they need to be half that so one, two, three, four, there we go. And I'm even going to leave the last one in there. There we go. Good. Sounds good to me. Checking it with the drums to make sure that it's not just me. And then looking at the mixer of it, turning them up because they were a bit quiet, that's better, and I've got another bridge haven't I further on so I'm just going to find that and then paste that in, no a bit too early I think. Much better. That's my two bridges done. And then, you know, you decide, is less more? Do I need to have any more? Just checking what I've got in my archive. I do like bass synthesizer sounds. But then, you know, could piano work? Maybe in the future AI could actually know what you BPM you're in and know the pitch and automatically change it for you as you're previewing these samples. That would be great. I 
as I say, you can spend too long doing this, but. So now we're in like 40 minutes into our video and into the arrangement. So I need to start thinking about finishing it off. Because I will need to do this track within an hour. And I do like to randomizely choose these samples. I don't like to click on one at a time. It just takes forever. I've got too many. But now I'm thinking, no, I don't need those samples. None of them fitted. But I do like MIDI. So let's have a look at MIDI. See if anything works with that. Now, there is a new FM synth on Cubasis. So I'm just checking out some of those samples there. Presets. The X7 was a Yamaha. FM chip from the 80s that was really famous in a lot of different songs in the 80s. But for me, I wasn't sure that was going to work. Now I'm checking some arpeggi arpeggios, sorry. See how they sound. So I've still got that song in my head, so I know what to expect. So I'm just, again, trying various presets. I'm playing the right chords for the song now. That's nice. If the timing's right, that would sound really good on the track. Yeah, I really like this. Not just the sound, but the art. Uh, the arpeggiator is really good. Now I always try and vary it. I try not to stick with presets because all of a sudden you'll get people going, oh, I know that sample from that song. That's from such and such. Or... Again, it's having the time to do it though, but this is the sequence. So I'm looking at changing the step sequencer just a little bit, just to vary it. That's better. Now I need to think about how I could record this. It doesn't need to be perfect when I record it because I can amend it after. So I'm just practicing before I hit that record button. So, I can show them at the start, recording. Wrong note. <laughs> Try again. Going a bit high. That's better. I think there was a little bug in it before. Try again. That seems to work well. I think I can use that. So I'm just going to zoom into my sample and actually double tap on it. You can see it's not completely aligned, so I'm going to select them and hit the quantize just so that they all align where, where they need to. That sounds good. Works really well. Again, I'm going to tone it down a bit, it's too loud. Put that. No, it's a bit off. That's better. Seems to work really well there, but I'm being conscious at the moment, thinking really it should be in the chorus because you have more elements in the chorus.
Okay, so I'm feeling now that the song is nearly complete. But I do like for the second chorus to vary it a little. So I've duplicated that whole track from track 9 into track 10. I'm going to just get rid of the first chorus and the intro properly because I didn't select it properly. There you go. Get rid of that. And focus on the second chorus now because then it kind of ends after this. So looking at maybe one occupier. That works well. We're pasting that in. Duplicated it again, but then I'm not sure if I need it really three times, but let's see what I could do with this. Maybe a different oscillator sound. Changing the arpeggio to a different one. That seems to work quite well. Again, just varying it slightly. This is a step sequencer here. Putting a bit of swing on. modulation wheels, changing the vibration depth. Adding a bit of delay now on the mix. Pleased with this track with how it's gone. Again, checking out some samples. Trying to decide if I need to change that drum loop. A lot of the time it's very hard to get the right sample to match. Nah, I'm not that keen on any of these, to be honest. In other songs, yeah, but not this one. And then it can be really confusing to have two lots of drums in, so... I felt none of these really worked. So I really like loops rather than instant one sound ones. No, I think I've got enough in there to be fair. Don't think I need anything else. No. Got a bit too harsh for this track. Again, just making sure. No. Okay, I'm happy with that track. I think that works. I think there's enough additions on there as well. So I'm just getting the range right for the track. And then zooming. Yeah, I'm turning that right down, that new old that new sample at the beginning that I used MIDI for, just so that it's not overpowering. I think that works quite well. And then it'll be checking it over, coming back to it, making sure that it's okay, making sure it's saved, saving the project file to my um, 
cloud storage. If you're interested in checking out my music, I'm known as Cyber Monday. I'm on all of the streaming services and Bandcamp as well. I love Bandcamp. So there you go. I'm really happy with that now. So yeah, as I say, I, I hope I, I did really want to do a whole video on how I would arrange a AI samples to a proper track. So that's why I decided to do this video. So I'm calling it Kings and Queens as my mix down. So that'll be my WAV file. And I'll put minus DB because I'm going to master it after. And then what I normally try and do, sometimes I forget, but I normally try and do an instrumental version as well. So I'll mute the vocal track, which is track four. And then again, I'll mix down. And this time it will be kings and queens, inst for instrumental, minus six DB as well. And that way I've got two versions of that track. And that's just rendering and then I can save those to my cloud as well. So there you go. Hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments if you want me to do some more. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.